let's move on then and put the spotlight on REC. Understand a little bit more about their order book, the borrowing picture, what is their diversification strategy and what's in store for FY25. Joining in right now, we have Vivek Kumar uh, Devangan, who is the Chairman and Managing Director at REC. Thank you so much for taking time out. Now, uh, given that at the Invest 2024, the company uh, signed the non-binding MOU with RE developers, and that aggregated to about 1.12 lakh crore rupees. Can you give us more details on this? Who are some of the players? What will be the timelines for these MOUs? This RE Invest Summit was organized by Ministry of New and Renewable Energy during 16th to 18th of September at Gandhinagar. And we are given our letter of commitment that is called Shepard Patu, Honorable Minister for New and Renewable Energy, that REC would be committed to provide financing to the entire value chain of renewable energy projects. And we intend to increase our renewable energy portfolio to about 3 lakh crore by the year 2030. In the light of this commitment, uh, we had discussion one on one basis with the uh, various developers in the RE sphere and we were able to sign MOUs worth 1 lakh 12,000 crore covering solar wind projects, hybrid solar wind projects, battery energy storage projects, pump storage hydro projects, large hydro projects, uh, electric vehicle mobility and uh, the associated charging infrastructure solar module manufacturing, wind turbine manufacturing units, new technology area like green hydrogen, green ammonia. The entire value chain of renewable energy projects will be covering uh, through this uh, financing, which we are committed to Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. Right, Mr. Devangan, out of uh, this, how much will you finance this year itself? That's in FI25. Yeah, let me just uh, go a little backward. Last year, when we had organized uh, Green Finance Summit on the sideline of G20 Energy Transition Working Group meeting in Goa in the month of July 2023, that time we had uh, signed MOUs worth 285,000 crore. And I am happy to share with you that out of 285,000 crore MOUs which we had signed in the month of July 2023, we have already sanctioned projects worth 175,000 crore so far. And the MOUs which we have signed about 1 lakh 10, 12,000 crore in Gandhinagar, we hope that we'll be able to issue sanctions and approvals within next one year. After receiving Mar now, Maharatana status, the company was also eyeing international projects, the financing of the green energy corridor also. So what is the status of the international projects now? Yeah, in fact, after getting Maharatana status in the year 2022, in the month of September 22, uh, we have got more operational and financial autonomy. Our board has been uh, uh, empowered to take uh, decisions. We have given a special focus on evacuation of the renewable energy. Since renewable energy is intermittent in nature, we need to have balancing power or storage solution. The evacuation of green energy through green energy corridors becomes very critical. So we have been financing this transmission line for evacuation of this green energy through the green energy corridors and we are committed that uh, right now we have been financing green energy corridors only in the uh, within the country so far no proposal have come from outside the country if any such proposal come we'll evaluate and we'll go by the guidelines of rbi while uh, financing projects outside india and you have also said that your total loan portfolio will be 10 lakh crores by 2030, which means an addition of 2.5 lakh crores for renewable energy and the non-renewable side each. Some would say that's a bit conservative, especially on the renewable side. Would you be revisiting these uh, targets? Yeah, let me just give the facts first. Our loan book at the end of financial year 24 was 5 lakh 9,000 crore. And after the end of <laughs> quarter one in FI25, our loan book has increased to 5 lakh 30,000 crore. Now, uh, we are, have made a business strategy that we would like to double our asset under management to say about 10 lakh crore by the year 2030 and most of it will come from renewable energy projects. Right now, my renewable energy portfolio is about 42,000 crore. That would see a huge jump about 6 to 8 times. It will increase to about 3 lakh crore. So, another two, uh, this, you have to understand that 
the project execution of renewable energy projects quite fast. Within two to three years, these renewable energy projects get commissioned, while large hydro projects and the uh, coal-based uh, power plant, they took more time, four to six years. Uh, yes, uh, I do agree that we had made, uh, we are given conservative estimates, but as going by the huge response that we received through the RE Invest Summit, I think that we'll be able to touch this 3 lakh crore uh, renewable energy portfolio well before 2030, maybe 2020 or 29 itself, we'll be able to achieve that target. Right. Uh, your company has given a guidance of about 17 to 20 percent growth in the loan book in FY25. Will you be revising the guidance upwards, looking at the pace of the power sector? Actually, uh, uh, we go by the hard facts, actually. Uh, FY23, our loan book had grown by 13 percent. In FY24, our loan book has increased by 17 percent. In the current financial year, FY25, in the, at the end of quarter one, our loan book has increased by 17%. So we hope to maintain that we are targeting that loan book may grow from 17 to 20%, but we are keeping a conservative estimate that at least 70% growth will be able to achieve. And you have to uh, appreciate the fact that whatever renewable energy project which we have sanctioned, that disbursement takes place over a period of two to three years. It doesn't happen instantaneously. So the Definitely the disbursement will increase substantially in FI 25 and 26, and our loan books will accordingly increase by FI 26. The company was expecting 2,000 crore right back in FI 25. Uh, the Lanco Amartang resolution was one of them, which Adani has got the where Adani has already got the NCLT approval. When do you expect recoveries from this, and how much recoveries can we expect in this quarter? Yeah, Lanco Amar contact has already been resolved. Uh, the NCLT order has already come. So that write back will happen in this quarter itself. And plus, we have some operational assets like KSK Mahanadi, Hiran May project, and this Sinner plant at Nasik. They are at advanced stage of bidding, and the initial bids that we have received, the response is quite good, and we hope to have good recovery. Although we have made provision to the extent of 68 to 70%, but uh, uh, we hope that we'll be able to recur almost the entire amount. So we hope to get right back about 1,500 crore to 2,000 crore in the current financial year. And your company also has <clears throat> foreign exposure in borrowing, especially uh, in the Japanese yen. Of late, we have seen Japan raising interest rates. How does this impact your interest payments? Will you go ahead and continue borrowing in the Japanese yen? We keep a prudent mix of borrowing profile actually. Our 40 to 40% 40 borrowing from the domestic corporate bonds. About 18% borrowing is from the domestic uh, term loan from the banks. And uh, 25 to 30% is from the external commercial borrowing. Uh, the external commercial borrowing at this, at the, at the present level, after accounting for all the hedging costs, is cheaper than, uh, than our domestic borrowing. So what we do is that we do 100% hedging of whatever external commercial borrowing we are doing. Uh, that's why uh, even if any fluctuation is there, the uh, exchange rate uh, or borrowing, uh, the, we do not get affected by all. And in fact, our borrowing from the external commercial sources, uh, we are targeting below 7%. And while domestic borrowing is about, it varies from 7.3 to 7.5%. So there is clear cut. Uh, benefit of 30 to 50 basis point if we are going for uh, foreign currency borrowing. So we do take a judicious view and our overall target is to reduce our cost of funds. Right. Mr. Devangan, in 2023, your company also entered into infrastructure and logistics financing, right? How much financing is done in these two sectors and also are you looking to diversify going forward? Yeah, actually, uh, we had got uh, approval from the Ministry of Power to diversify into non-power infrastructure logistics in the year uh, 2022. And in the first year, we had sanctioned projects worth about 85,000 crore. But in FY24, we sanctioned projects worth about 40,000 crore only. Right now, my hands are full, actually. Our core competency is in the power sector, the power generation, distribution, and transmission. And with a renewed focus on renewable energy, 
a lot of pro uh, projects are coming in the traditional uh, uh, power sector and renewable energy projects. Since my hands are full from my core competence area, we are going. Uh, we are very choosy about this non-power infrastructure logistics, and um, our first priority and uh, has to utilize our core competence area in power sector and renewable energy sector. Let me, uh, if I could encourage you to clear the air, we understand that uh, Vodafone Ideas approach REC for fundraising. Is it true? Are they speaking to you? Could you be looking at financing them? No such proposal is there with us at present. And anyway, we have not done any telecom sector financing, so we'll be very cautious. And uh, right now, we are not considering uh, uh, any such proposal for uh, telecom infrastructure financing at this stage. Uh, 